Okay. All right. So, okay, so we're going to just continue from where we left off. Uh, let's see here. So let's take a look into a connection between two layers. So this is just a blown up. We're going to take a look at just the, on, you know, a neural network just considering two nodes. So we're going to take a look at one layer and another layer and then the connection between the two neurons and the weight. And we're, we're just establishing notation here. So if you haven't noticed by now, the superscript bracket L, it's used to reference the layer to reference the layer L. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So basically uh, each node here has an incoming signal and an outgoing signal. You know, there's input wires and output wires, right? So a node has an incoming signal, right? S and output X, okay? So the notation here that we're gonna adopt, S subscript J superscript L is the signal going in to node J at layer L. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, notation that we're going to adopt, right? So this this signal right here. So S sub J, you know, superscript L is the node or the signal that's coming into node J at layer L. Okay, and then similarly, X of J L is the output output signal of node J at layer L. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, and then there's also a weight that connects between the two nodes, between the previous layer and the current layer. So the notation is WIJ of L. So this is the weight. So this is from node i of layer L minus one to node j of layer L. Okay, so that's how it usually is. Okay, so how the weights are indexed are the Weights are determined by the ones that are going into the current layer. Okay, so WIJL is the weight from node I of layer L minus one into node J of layer L. Okay, so weights are indexed by the layer they go into. Okay, so the bias nodes have no input incoming signals. Okay, so S O of J. So there's no, there's none of this. Okay, so there's only outgoing signals. So X of zero, J. Okay, so the subscript tells you which node you're at and the superscript tells you which layer you're at. So X of zero would be the bias units of layer J. So there's only outgoing, outgoing signals, there's no input, there's no incoming signals. Okay, all right. So just a little more. Each layer, this is just, uh, just laying out the information. Each layer L has DL plus one nodes, which that makes sense, right? Because D, D of L tells you how many nodes there are for layer L excluding the bias. So you add plus one to include the bias unit, right? And, oopsie. Uh, where are we? Here we go. And if there are
nodes in the next layer. That makes sense, right? Okay, so you have current layer has D of L nodes plus the bias. And then what's going to happen is that each of these nodes are going to connect to all the other nodes in the next layer, excluding the bias. So that'll be DL plus 1, because L plus 1 is the next layer, and then you have all those nodes except for the bias. That's why we don't have a plus 1 here. So you have DL plus 1 nodes in the next layer. This means we will have DL plus 1 times D of L plus 1 possible weights or possible outgoing signals. It makes sense, right? Because if each node goes into D of L plus 1 other nodes and then there are D L plus 1 nodes, then you have that many output signals possible. Right, because each one of them will be going to all the other nodes in the next layer, and you have D superscript L plus one of them. Okay, that's just pointing out the facts. It's not, uh, you know, nothing, nothing to worry about. Okay, here are some important questions to ask. So I've laid out pretty much all the notation. Let's actually get into the meat of this stuff. So some important questions to ask. Okay, one. How do we train a neural network? That's the number one question that we probably want to ask ourselves. How do we actually get this to work in our favor? How do we get this to be able to classify between two classes or whatever? Okay. So if you take a look at a neural network, the whole backbone behind it are the weights, or the weights between each of the neurons. Okay. So the whole point of training a neural network is to be able to find the best weights so that it will be able to correctly classify or predict the right things for you. Okay? So find the optimal weights W, I, J, L for all layers. So you want to find the right parameters like you did for linear logistic regression. It's the same thing for a neural network. Neural network. You want to find the right or the optimal weights or the optimal parameters to be able to have the best accuracy possible. Okay. So just like uh, before, we are given M training examples. So you've got, you know, first training example, the second training example, and so on and so forth. Okay? Okay, so each example has n features. Right, so right, so this is each one of them has n features, right? Da, 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 and so on. Okay? So this is the bias. Usually one. Bias unit, so to speak. Okay? So how it works is when you're training, the input layer takes in the, or it assumes the input features for that particular training example. So therefore, the input the input layer zero takes in the features, or the uh, input features, I guess. You can, you can say it like that, sure. Okay, and then the output layer has the expected value. You can use neural networks to work for whatever you want. You can use it for the case of classification. So when you take a look at the output of a neural network, what you can do is you can do it exactly like you did it for logistic regression. So if you take a look at the output, 
And if you're using the sigmoid, if the output is bigger than 0.5, you classify it as positive, and if it's less than 0.5, you classify it as negative. If you're taking a look at regression, then you don't, all you're doing is you're just taking a look at the output as is. You don't have to threshold or anything. The output is continuous, you use that as the predictive value. Okay? So, <clears throat> for classification, Uh, use or threshold the output to figure out what class it's in. To determine class. So for example, if you're using the sigmoid function, if the, if the activation function was a sigmoid, then what you do is if the output was bigger than 0 0.5, then it's the positive class. And if it's less than 0.5, then it's the negative class. So, so, you know, that's just an example. Okay? So for regression, use, you use the output, just the raw output. You don't do any thresholding. You just take a look at the output, and that is the predicted value. You use the raw output. Okay, so using, so you have M training examples. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these examples to figure out the best weights for your neural network so that when you take any of these inputs and you put it into the neural network, the predicted output should match the expected output as close as possible. So it's the same mechanism. It's just you're, you're using a different system in order to find the same thing. All right, so using these examples, you find the right weights. So each input example uh, generates the expected output at the output layer. Okay? So that's what we want to do. That's the whole goal. Okay? We'll talk about how to train a neural network later. I just wanted to lay out what you're supposed to do. Okay? All right. So two. Here's the next question I want to ask. Suppose we have the right weights. Let's say we've managed to compute the optimal weights for every single layer that we have. Okay, for all layers. How do we do it? Okay, so how do we uh, use the neural network? Okay, so I'm going to use NN for neural network for short. Because I'm uh, just going to save some time here. It takes a long time to write neural networks. So I'm just going to write NN for short. So how do we use a neural network to predict outputs? So what is the actual mechanism that we use? Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to use a new example that you haven't seen before. So something that you haven't seen in training. You, know, you have an example that has n features. You're going to take this and you're going to put it into the neural network, do all the computations on each layer, take a look at where the output layer is, and whatever output that gives you, that's what the predicted value would be. Very simple. Okay? So use the, you know, use a new example. Use a new example, so let's call it X. It has a bunch of features, you know, that are associated with that particular input, right? And this is the bias unit, it's usually set to one. Okay, and uh, these are inputs into the input layer, or layer zero, okay? Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to let the neurons do all the computation, and then you're going to take a look at what the output layer gives you, and that's what the output will be. So let the neurons do the computation. And observe output layer L. And then if it's, you know, if it's uh, classification, you threshold the output. If it's regression, you just use the raw output as it is. And uh, that's about it. So let the neurons do the computation and observe output. This process, is no it's also has a very special name. This process is what is known as forward propagation. 
is what you're doing is you're taking information and you're pushing it forward into the neural network. So it's called, and you're propagating information. So this process is what is known as forward propagation. If you actually uh, take a look at certain machine learning textbooks or, or literature. Okay? So here's a little bit of a preamble. I'll talk about how to do this in a minute. But I just want to give you a little taste of what's going on. Okay. So again, the notation is different, so just replace all these with G for the activation function. So I'm going to use G for the activation function in this course. Okay? All right. So also let's take a look at this figure as well. So we're, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use these both to figure out, you know, to talk about what I want here. Okay. So uh, how forward propagation works is what you need to do is you have to compute outputs at every single neuron for each layer. Okay. So for each node, what's going to happen is that you're going to collect all the outputs from the previous layer. You know, you're going to weight them by each of their corresponding turns. You're going to sum them up and then you're going to apply an activation function at that particular node and that output gets sent to all the other neurons in the next layer. Okay? So for each node, collect the inputs and compute the output. Compute output. Okay? So let's take a look at, so, you know, let's, let's assume for a moment we've got all these other neurons that are connected here and they're all being fed into the single neuron. Okay, and for so, like that. So, if I want to compute the input that's coming into a particular node J at layer L, it's very simply this. So, what you're going to do is you're going to sum over every single neuron that's from the previous layer. So, from I is equal to zero. So, that's including the bias, right? So, this includes the bias. up to the previous layer, okay? Each of these weights correspond to a connection between the node from the previous layer to the node at the current layer for J. So it's simply this. Okay? This is how it would be. So for the input signal that's coming in, you're going to take each of the outputs from the previous layer, so at L minus 1 for I, for, so going from 0 all the way up to as many nodes as there are from the previous layer, and then each of them are going to be weighted by their corresponding connection from the neurons from the previous layer to that node J for the current layer. So you can, succinct, you can succinctly write it as the sum, all right? So basically you're going to sum all outputs from the previous layer L minus 1 which is basically L X of I L minus 1 so for all the outputs in the previous layer and you're going to weight them by the corresponding weights weight them by the IJ okay and also the bias unit zero, it, we, just, we usually assume that this is one. Okay, this is the bias unit. Okay, so basically this is the input into node J of layer L. Okay, and then this guy here is the number of nodes from the previous layer, all right? And this guy here just talks about what I just talked about before. So that's a very, very simple formula, OK? So you have all these inputs that are coming into this node. And then the output is simply taking this input signal and applying the activation function to it. OK, so that's, that's seriously all it is. So if you want to compute the output, you're just simply applying the activation function to the input, so, okay, so this is equal to G of this guy here, okay, 
Okay. All right. So this is the activation function. So you can use the sigmoid, you can use the hyperbolic tangent, it just depends on what application you're using. Okay, so there's the output. So this is the, so x of j L is the output of node j at layer L. Okay, so that's seriously it. Okay, so now that we have that, now that we know what the inputs and outputs are for each neuron, what is the final procedure? So what's the final process? This is the forward propagation algorithm. Okay, so the first step is to initialize the input layer with a particular input that you want. Right, so initialize the input layer. So this is x of zero, right? And this is usually equal to one. And then we have as the input example. So you're gonna initialize the input layer to be the example that you wanna take a look at, okay? That's the first step. So the second step now is just to go from the first layer to the last layer and just keep computing all these inputs and the activation functions with their outputs. Okay, so for layer, L is equal to from one, two, all the way up to L. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna compute the outputs for every single node of that particular layer. For node J is equal to one, to up to as many nodes as there are in that particular layer, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna compute the inputs. So W, I, J, L, uh, X, O, okay? And then you're gonna compute this corresponding output. Okay? So you're gonna keep doing this, you're gonna keep doing this until you finally get to the output layer, okay? Once you get to the output layer, the output, which is xj of capital L, in this case, you know, if you took a look at example, it was three, whatever the final output is of the output layer, that would be what your predicted value would be. And then you can use that to your role. You can threshold it for classification, just use the raw output for regression, and so on and so forth, okay? So the predicted output is stored in the upward layer L. As X of J L, right? Where J is equal to from one, two, all the way up to as many neurons in the upward layer that we have. Okay, so that's what the predicted output would be. Okay, great. So that's good, but then you can certainly do this faster if you take a look at this in terms of linear algebra. You can actually do this very efficiently if you compute matrix vector multiplications. It's actually the algorithm is much more succinct that way. Let's take a look at it in terms of linear algebra for a little bit. And also this will help when you finally get to the point where you want to implement this in, uh, in MATLAB where it takes advantage of matrix vector multiplications. Okay, we can Eventually, do for propagation with matrix vector multiplications. Okay, so here are some definitions before we start. So these definitions are vital so that you can actually understand what is going on when I decide to flip to this point. So let me just uh, show you the diagram again. Here are some definitions. So if you take a look, each of these input signals that are going into a particular layer, what you can actually do is you can collect them into a single vector, all right? So each of these input signals here, you can, for example, for this one, what you can do is you can collect all these input signals into a three element vector. So instead of considering each element individually, you can consider 
all the input signals coming into layer one, or L is equal to one, is a three element vector. So each element in this vector tells you what the input signals will be for that particular neuron in that layer. Okay? So the input, so A. The input signals, which one do I got? Input signals going into the nodes of layer L can be represented as a single D L element vector. Oopsie. Trying to erase this, but it's okay. Let me just skip to the next page then. And then I can erase that a little better. That's very good. All right? So all these input signals coming in, except for the bias, you can represent the vector, or you can represent the elements as a D to the L element vector. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to represent this as S sub L. Okay, so S of L means that it is the vector of inputs that are going into layer L. All right, so, <coughs> sorry. And then you can do the same thing for the output as well. So the output layers, is the outputs actually represent uh, input signals coming in. Oh, sorry, let me see here. Oh, sorry, I mixed up the notation. So single D input signals going into mode. Oh, okay, sorry. What I actually mean to do is this, sorry. So it's actually, Sorry, it's actually D to the L minus one. I'm going to explain why in a minute. Okay, so you have these input signals that are coming in. So from the previous layer, you have all these inputs that are coming in, including the uh, bias, so these input signals. You can represent them as uh, D to the L minus one plus one because of the bias unit, and you can represent them as S of L. Right, so all these elements that are coming in. Okay, so the output signals going out of the nodes, right, so the output signals are coming out. Actually, yeah, I, I missed it up. I'm sorry about that. So actually, you know what? I had it right before. Sorry. So this is D to the L, right? So we have inputs coming in and then outputs. So the output signals coming going out of the uh, out of layer L can be represented okay, as a single yeah so they're both the same on that sorry about that single element vector Okay, so we can represent this as XL. Okay, so you have input signals that are coming in and then output signals that are going out. So we can represent them as a single vector, right, as a sub X of L. Okay, so then uh, the next thing that we can do is we can use a matrix which is called WL. So this is a matrix of weights. Okay, where each row and column tell you the weight from a node I of layer I'm uh, layer is it L minus one to node J of layer L. So we actually what we can do is we can represent these weights, uh, you know, from one neuron to, from one node to another, sorry, from one layer to another as a weight matrix, where the row will tell you the node that it comes from from the previous layer, and the column will tell you where it will go to in the current layer. Okay? So 
me see. Uh, X of zero. X, yes. Okay, that's good. All right. So, uh, therefore, is a Okay, that makes sense. Because if the rows are, represent, are representing all of the notes in the previous layer and the bias is output units, that means we have in total d to the l minus one plus one neurons for the previous layer because of the bias unit. Okay, and then you have the next layer, which is the current layer d to the l. So we can represent that as a matrix like so. All right, so the row will tell you, you know, the source node from the previous layer and the column will tell you the node for the current layer. So row is the uh, source node for layer L minus one. And the column is the uh, target node for layer L. Okay? So you can represent the matrix like this. So it, it'll look like this. So Oops, sorry. Wrote that wrong. Zero. Okay? So the first row is the source. In this case, this, the first row represents all the bias nodes, and then we're going to the first node of the current layer, and then you can do the rest. Uh, one. Okay. And this is one, two. Right, and so on. And this is one. and so on, and so on. Okay? All right. So remember, there's no weight between the bias units. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Does it, it start at W0 one, not one, one? That's right. I did do that, right here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking if that was right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I started at zero one. Yeah, is that your question or? Yeah. Yeah, it starts at zero one. Yeah, I, just, I corrected myself as you were writing it down. Yeah, so remember the uh, source, so what you're doing is W zero is the bias unit and it goes to the first unit of the next layer. So there's no W zero zero because bias units still connect between themselves, okay? So you have that. So now if you take a look at this, all right? So uh, let me just, let me just, put down this diagram one more time so we can actually uh, take a look. So I have this diagram again. Okay, so let's recall the definition of the input layer. So we have S of J of L is equal to, oops. And then we have, uh, Okay, and then usually the bias unit, the output is equal to one. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So if you take a look at this, you notice that the summation is increasing for the rows. So if you take a look at this matrix, if you were to take each of these columns and do a dot product with this and the vector for the previous layer, and then you sum everything up. That's essentially equal to the input that's going in for that node. So what you can do conveniently is, is if you transpose this matrix and do a matrix vector multiplication, what you'll compute are the inputs into each of the layers simultaneously by using matrix vector multiplication. So instead of running this summation, you know, d to the l times, you just transpose this matrix and then run this multiplication with this vector of xi, and then you compute the actual inputs that are going in. Right, so each column, each column of uh, WL can be used 
to find the input signal for node uh, J of layer L. Okay, so you can actually compute that very easily. Okay, so what you can do is you can represent the output signals as a vector too. So if we represent the uh, output signals of the previous layer as a vector, right? We'll call this x of l minus 1, we just talked about before. All you have to do is you can compute this very efficiently by my matrix vector multiplication. By a matrix vector multiplication. So very simple, all you have to do is this. So S of L equals And then if you want to find what the output is, all you have to do is just apply the activation function to every single element in this vector individually. Okay, so and. Okay, so apply activation to each element individually. So I'm just going to reiterate this one more time so you can see. All right, so if you take a look at this summation here, all right, you notice that uh, if we were to put all these weights into a matrix where the row determines the source node from the previous layer and the column determines where the node would be for the current layer, notice that what we're doing here is we are summing over every single column. So if we took each column by itself and did a dot product with the um, outputs from the previous layer, if we represented them as a vector, if you did dot products for each of those columns, you actually figure out what the inputs would be to each of the inputs into the next layer. So what you can do is if you simply transpose these, each of the columns become the rows, and if you did a matrix vector multiplication, then the outputs for, or the inputs into each of the layers for that, or the inputs, for, sorry, the, um, the input values for each of the neurons in that particular layer would be succinctly rep represented as a matrix vector multiplication. So it's actually very nice. So that's all you really need to know there. Okay. So, all right, so here it is in terms of linear algebra viewpoint. So I just wanted to derive that for you, but if you want to just, you, if you want to take away something, then just remember this. I'm just taking a look at how much I got. Okay, forward propagation. Okay, so one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna initialize x0 to be, uh, you know, These are all the uh, inputs that you want to take a look at, right? So this is a vector of inputs. So you're just going to initialize the input layer to be the example that you want to take a look at. And then what you want to do is for each layer, all the way up to the end, right? You're going to compute the uh, inputs into each layer as simply Okay, and then finally, what you're going to do is you are going to compute the output, and then what's going to happen is that this computes just the inputs into each of the layers for that particular layer, and then what you have to do is you have to compute the activation, and then what you have to do is you have to append a bias of one so that you're able to compute the matrix vector multiplication. So you have one, and then... Okay, because this outputs 
it handles everything except for the bias. So what you need to do is if you want this multiplication to work, you gotta add a number one so that when you do the matrix vector multiplication, you are accounting for the bias. So that's why you have to prepend a one. Okay, so then three predicted. Obviously when, we, when it gets down to where we're gonna do an example, just to be sure that we know what we're doing here. So predicted output is seen is uh, at x of l. Okay, so that's what the final output would be. So this will be forward propagation using linear algebra. So this is a uh, very simple, very simple algorithm. Okay. So, so far we've only talked about how to predict outputs. I haven't actually talked, talked about how to train them yet. So let me just lay, lay out a little background info and then we'll take a break. So, so far we have only talked about Yeah, I'll talk about that after. I did talk about the midterm uh, in the, in the uh, very beginning. Okay. How do we train neural networks and get the optimal weights? Okay, so all you have to do is, uh, well, not all you have to do, it's actually a little more complicated than that. So before we talk about this, we need to talk about the cost function. So what we've talked about before was um, when you want to find the right parameters or something, you have to figure out what the right cost function would be in order to get the right parameters, right? So we need to know the cost function to optimize to get the right weights. Okay, so here we go. Just lay out this information and we're good to go. Okay, so right cost function, right weights. All right, so we will deal with the squared error. Like, like before. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to define it for a single example and then we'll generalize to M examples. So define the error E of I to be the error between the predicted output and the expected output. So the output, you know, at at the uh, output layer. All right, let's just assume. And true output. Uh, give an example i. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Okay, so this, will, but this is what it would be for just a single example. So this here is the uh, output layer, so the, the value at the output layer. And this is the ith example. And then usually, this, this can be a single value, but sometimes the output layer can have, you know, it can have more than one neuron. So what's like gonna happen is that you actually have a vector of outputs. So you wanna find the length of, you wanna find the actual um, length of this vector. So this is actually the magnitude. Okay, so you can represent this as, uh, so this is uh, x1. So it's just a summation of all the squared terms. And 
and so on and so forth. Okay, and then uh, yeah. Okay, therefore. Uh, so this is just one example. Okay, so what you, what we usually do is we're we're given a set of weights. So we're given a set of weight matrices. So we have a weight matrix for layer one, weight matrix for layer two, and so on. So we have a bunch of weights that define our neural network. So given a set of uh, weights, or weight matrices. Okay, so put them in a capital set. So this is W1, W2, as many uh, as we have output layers. Okay, therefore the total or the average cost to use these weights for predictions is so j is the usual variable we use for cost so using these weights okay the cost is simply just adding up all the error terms together and averaging them out. Okay. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what the error is for one example, and then you want to figure out what the average error is by just accumulating all of them and just dividing by m. And the reason why we have a half here is because you'll see in a minute when we actually do the gradient descent stuff, the half will cancel because of the quadratic term. But anyway, that's that's what it would be. Okay. So let me just okay. Okay, I'll take a break here and then I'll continue onwards. But uh, yeah, that this is the cost function that we would use to minimize to find the optimal weight. So how we do that, we're gonna talk about that after the break.